there has been uh, quite a lot of achievements uh, in the project, um, uh, owing to the fact that most of the radios uh, did not, they have never had any uh, previous injection or support in, in the area of capacity, capacity building, but also support to improving the working conditions. This is the first ever big support that most of the radios have received. So uh, to me that is an achievement. But also uh, many of the radios were operating, um, you know, just like, uh, you, know, you know, without any procedures. Uh, to give you an example, some of the radios did not have even bank accounts, like Mtegani Community Radio, but now they have bank accounts. So those are some of the achievements. But also the project has helped uh, local radios in Tanzania to strengthen the, the network of uh, uh, community radios. Uh, and through that network now they are able to raise more funding because they are marketing themselves jointly as uh, local radios, but also they've been able to strengthen the network of technicians by sharing experiences among themselves, uh, technical expertise. So for instance, if one radio has got a broken equipment, they can easily source technical expertise from another radio. And all of this is because of, of this project, which has enabled them to network and to share experiences. I can say almost all the activities were valuable. However, let me point a few which uh, attracted more attention. For instance, the use of uh, mobiles to cover news and to edit programs. Because in Tanzania, we've, go, we've gone to the next extent of uh, you know, developing the capacity of local radios to use, uh, uh, for instance, tablet computers to edit radio programs. That has been uh, very popular. But also the um, financial management and uh, leadership aspects of the, of the, of the you know, of management of local radios, that has also been popular. And the third, which I say has been very popular, is the one on disaster, uh, you know, and, uh, and disaster management and, uh, you know, and um, relief operations. And it has been significant because at the moment, there is even a request from the Prime Minister's Office, Disaster Management Unit. Um, there is a request from the Food Security uh, uh, Department and the Meteorological Department that this training should be rolled out to more radios because they want this, uh, train, uh, these local radios to be part of the National Disaster Management uh, Strategy. So these are some of the you know, workshops and training and capacity building activities that have been very popular. There are so many challenges. Uh, as you know, in Africa, we have uh, we, we we daily live on uh, you know sorting of challenges. Uh, Tanzania is a very large country, and we have local radio spread all over the country. Uh, one of the biggest challenges is the geographical coverage. You know, we need a lot of money to to send uh, you know radio participants. I mean, participants from the local radios to workshops. But we have, able to, we have been able to manage that by clustering the local radios. So we cluster them into geographical groupings. And that has helped us uh, quite a lot. But also the challenge of equipment. Uh, you know, it's very, it's very challenging when you're, you're training on, on use of ICTs when uh, there's a lack of equipment on the ground. That's, that's a big, big challenge. But also, uh, another challenge that I can see is the fact that we have started the, the, from a very low base. Many local radios, I can say, were starting from scratch. They did not have uh, business plans, they did not have um, guidelines, you know, even recording on who comes into the office in the morning and who goes out, who is, who is taking a certain piece of equipment. So we, we are more or less like, the challenge has been we've been more or less like uh, developing systems, you know, uh, processes from scratch for most of the local radios. Uh, so that has been a huge challenge, but of course it's part of the, uh, has been part of the project. And equipment uh, has been a problem, but uh, through the training, uh, we've, we, we, we've mitigated the, the challenge because uh, the training were very exciting, and to an extent that some of the correspondents and journalists uh, ended up buying some of the equipment themselves. They are so excited after finding out how useful use of ICTs is. In fact, there are a lot of things that uh, other countries can learn from, from us. But uh, I think the, the biggest thing is, um, first of all, uh, th this project has brought 
a lot of interests. And uh, the way we have uh, delivered in Tanzania is that we have uh, looked at it from, um, uh, you know, as, a pro as part of a larger program of local radios. So we have used the pro project uh, as a contributor of UNESCO's activities in the United Nations Development Assistance Plan. And uh, because it's part of the UNDAP, which means it, it goes directly into contributing to national objectives for sustainable development. But also, as a result of that, the, 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 the UN now recognizes the project and also the development partners, because they read this UNDAP, they recognize the project, and as a result, we are linking this project to many other things. Let me give you an example. For instance, we have uh, another project which is related to uh, uh, preparing the local radios for the referendum uh, and the uh, forthcoming elections in 2015. So we have synergized this project with that aspect, because capacity building is capacity building, which means ICTs can also be used to promote participation of women in the elections, etc. So uh, what, what we can share with other countries is that this project uh, is not a standalone project. It has to be linked to uh, the national development agenda in general and the UN support uh, in the country.